Barton, who came up with the idea for a benefit show for Amnesty International? Well, the credit for that must absolutely go to John Cleese. Um, uh, Amnesty International was actually founded in 1961, but for the first 15 years, you well, didn't really have a high profile, and I think you almost had to be a, a bit of a foreign policy wonk to know about it. Certainly the general public, wider general public, didn't know. John was a supporter, had sent some money to the Amnesty head office, and one of the folks there saw a, a check from Jay Cleese and wondered if it was perchance the same contacted John and said, look, can you help us in any other ways? And John said, well, maybe I could put on a show. I'll call up a couple of friends. And of course, Terry was one of the friends and many of the other folks from Pythons and so on. But also from the Beyond the Fringe group. And was the, wasn't the first director of the very first one, Jonathan Miller from Beyond the Fringe? It was indeed Jonathan Miller. And it was like a gathering of the British comedic tribes. And this actually happened just only a few years after George Harrison had done his concert for Bangladesh. And I, I always felt at the time that in the same way that George Harrison had brought together the cream of rock musicians, what John brought together was the cream of British comedians from different generations. Well, let's go back to the beginning. So the 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 shows were the first show was planned, and I'm sure it was thought of as a, a one time event, and it was late night. Yes, that was one of John's ideas, um, uh, partly to do it in a West End theatre. In those days, charity shows tended to be on, a one-off on a Sunday evening at 8 o'clock at night. And John thought it would be better, A, to have it late night, and B, to be in, uh, have more than one night. So we did three nights the very first year, and then subsequently four nights. And the benefit of that was that um, there was a looser atmosphere at 11.30 at night. Uh, I dare say that some of the audience were, shall we say, hydrated. Um, and they also, I'm sure felt like they were part of an in crowd a, a special group uh, because they were uh, in this theater late at night with this incredible lineup. There was, a, there was an absolute intimacy and, and Terry will tell me on this I, I suspect that one or two of the performers were also <laughs> hydrated were they? <laughs> I expect we were Martin about half past eleven probably yes. <laughs> So you, you, how did you get involved, Martin? I got involved first when um, I, uh, one of the performers mentioned that, uh, that they were do, uh, do, doing this charity show and asked if I could help out. I'd produced a comedy record, uh, spoofing Idi Amin uh, at the time. This is before we, when we thought he was just a buffoon, before we realised what a tyrant he was. And I, 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 he, I said, uh, well, maybe I could, we could sell the records that you've just done at this charity show. And then I thought, well, maybe when I heard the lineup, I said, well, maybe somebody should record it. And I was about 22 at the time and uh, nobody wanted to do it because it was there was not no money in it because it was a benefit show and I volunteered to get involved and over the years I got further and further involved and that led to something I mean the performers with Terry and Mike Palin and Graham Chapman and, and John Cleese of course with all these comedic performers over the years it then broadened out because we started adding music which led to a greater wider awareness of amnesty I assume, Martin, that in time everybody started approaching you and saying, I want to be part of this too. So you wind up with Billy Connolly and Rowan Atkinson and others also participated. Yes, though it was usually by invitation. And first of all, John Cleese was brilliant at doing that. John always spotted young talent, so he invited Rowan Atkinson uh, and uh, v various other young performers. He brought on the young Hugh Laurie and uh, Stephen Fry, uh, long before House. Uh, uh, John did that. Uh, Billy Connolly was an old friend of mine. And then the music side, which uh, really helped Amnesty here in America. Um, uh, John Cleese, and I think I'm right in saying this, Terry, uh, Alone Among the Pythons was not the biggest rock and roll fan. That wasn't his cup of tea. Yeah, I think, I think Eric was the, uh, Eric Idle was the biggest rock and roll fan, and, uh, and John was the other end of the spectrum. <laughs> That's right, and, and John, uh, so I, uh, John had invited John Williams, the classical guitarist, along, and I, I rather timidly said, could we have something a little contemporary as well? And John said, well, uh, th that's fine, it's not my cup of tea, but go ahead if you want. And I invited Pete Townsend, and I can't claim that we invented Unplugged wittingly we just did it because they were comedy sketches and we needed a little bit of acoustic music between the sketches and uh, Pete Townsend came up and did uh, Pinball Wizard and Won't Get Fooled Again but that did lead to other performers such as Sting and uh, Bono and Peter Gabriel and Bob Geldof and Eric Clapton they saw what Townsend did and they caught the bug and they wanted to contribute as well.